Well, folks, I've got another little lawnmower here. I've literally just been and picked this up. I paid £25 for it. It's a little mount field. And uh, all the bloke told me on Facebook Marketplace was that it had a fuel leaking hose and also it was revving its head off. So let's have a look and just see what I found with it. Well, this is it, folks. It's a little Mountfield Delta uh, laser, 42 centimetre, hand propelled cut. In other words, it's a push mower. And it's got the overhead valve Mountfield um, RS100 overhead valve engine on it, as you can see there. And looking around it, the reason why I chose this one was because it didn't look like it needed much doing to it. As you can see, the deck's in pretty good nick. You get the normal little bit of paint peel you get down there, but uh, all in all, it's uh, all solid, the labels and stickers are all in good order, the engine looks in good order and when I got turned up he said uh, this was the, he had, he, had, he had a leaking fuel hose there and he said oh, he put another uh, fuel hose on there but it's way too big and when he started it up again he said it was revving its nuts off and uh, it did start out for me when I was at the house and sure enough it was revving high but I literally come home and uh, we looked at the governor arm there and the governor arm was stuck and as I was pushing it, you can't see it from here, but if I come around the front there, you can see just in there maybe that it pushes the uh, throttle lever backwards and forwards. Well, that was actually stuck. So after pushing it a few times, it's, uh, it's freed off, and I started it up, and it started. So let me show you. It's priming all right. He said it's got a bit of petrol in it. Up with the handle. One, two. There you go. Maybe running a bit slow, but I'm sure we can speed that up. I'll turn it off because I haven't checked the oil level on it yet. I always like to check the oil level before I start one of these up. But all in all, it's actually not too bad. If I take the uh, bag off, and once again, very little wrong with the bag at all. So that's another bonus. It's got a little bit of scuff in there, but that's not a problem. So if we come under the front of it, I did have a look underneath it, but as you can see, it's actually lovely and clean. I'm, I don't really need to do anything under there. I'm well happy with that. The blade looks in pretty good order, although I probably will take it off and give it a sharpen. Looking around it, as you can see, everything seems to be A-OK. -okay. I will put another plug in it. I will give it an oil change. We will check the oil filter, uh, sorry, the air filter, which obviously lives under here. And as you can see, there's no air filter actually fitted to it. So I will put an air filter in there. That's not a problem. But because it runs so smooth, I won't even need to do a carb clean on it. It's just a general clean up, which we'll do. The pull cord looks in pretty good order and all. So yeah, I'm not even gonna bother with that. So we do as little work as this as possible. I may just sort of undo these bolts here and just give this a little bit of a bit of black paint on the uh, handles there, just to tidy that up. And I won't do anything to the bodywork apart from just give it a clean up. So the wheels all look good. Cut the bent, um, wheel caps there as you can see so I may just have to flatten them out or if not I might have some spare ones there so uh, shouldn't be too much of a problem to do that just bend them the other way look I don't know why they've gone like that maybe being out in the sun maybe I don't know not too sure but that's not a problem they'll clean up nicely anyway and maybe a couple of cable ties down the handle just for the um, the engine brake and all in all that has got to be worth 70 pounds and all I've got to do is put an air filter in it a plug oil change which I've got all that stuff anyway serviceable items and a little bit of a uh, beautification let's get this little baby in there 25 quid this cost me as you well know I'll take the uh, basket off we don't need that on there let's put it over there and get it up on the hoist I have ordered a new air filter for this, but uh, it hasn't turned up. It's been about three or four days. I did order it off of a website, but apparently you can get them special delivery. So I don't know what that means. They said they're going to send one around special delivery because I did complain. Special delivery for Mr. Butler. Who we got here then? Look. Well, you've ordered a RS100 air filter here. That's not my normal delivery, man. 
better looking than the normal delivery man's so eye here. You can't get these for two weeks, so I thought I'd just drive up 500 miles to come and do it for you. I told him much it is yet, boy. Well, go on, go on, hit me with it. 35 quid. <laughs> right, it's the wrong model. It's... Out you go. Back down to Bogner, mate. It's a delivery charge. Can you just uh, help me out here? I, I, I don't know how these go in, by the way. I, I don't know if I can stick this in. Well, come on, take it out of the packet first. Why do you do that? I like to see him do some work. Now, these aren't cheap, actually, for what they are. That was £4.50. Yeah, they're not, they're, they're not. And you can get a bridge one, and you've got a fatty driver. <sighs> Hold on. Oh, I might get away with it. Oh, no, we're in no, no. I've, I've got everything. Look. Hang on, hang on, Martin. I'm in. You in? Put it, push it harder. It's upside down. Don't you crease it? You'd know if I put a crease in it, bruv. Yeah. Whack it in. Should, do we not oil it, or should we leave it? Don't need to really. Do you do know we? what? I'm not. I'm not a fan of oiling filters no, anyway. No, no. They're only just there to collect the, collect the stuff. I don't know anyone who does it. People do say do it, but you know, then other people say don't bother. Yeah. You know, one the it's one. It's one for the comment section. It's one for a comment section. Leave it in there. Do all yours, or do you just go in dry run? Yeah. That's what I'd say. So I'm just, I'm just thinking here, because this paint works in pretty good condition. I'm just thinking of giving it a wipe over. Wipe over, good to go. We'll use some of that. Maybe that's some of that. What's that stuff that um that revive it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Tidy, okay. tidy the old plastic up a little bit. Yeah, okay. yeah. I will change the plug. We'll change the plug. Paul Cole don't need to do it. Can you just check that for me? Because I'm not too sure. So these engines, actually, these engines, just remove the uh, spark plug uh, boot. Often, we always do that, don't we? Yeah, we always do that. We're off in safety. Yeah, that's good, to go, isn't it? You happy with that? Yeah, it's good. So these actually normally they come with either a little Honda a GX100 on there, don't they? A little side bow. That's it. Um, so has someone had the engine off of this one beforehand and uh, done an engine swap? I'd say so. Who knows? I'll tell you something though. <laughs> you can tell a professional because when we've done the servicing on it and they go and take it outside, the bit they normally cut out is when they're pulling and pulling and pulling because oh, yeah, yeah. it ain't started. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He does that. You know what he does? He don't put the plug, plug cap back in. I, I, I've actually left a comment in one of your you videos before. On there, yeah, yeah, twice now. I've done He's that. done it. It does happen. We, we still do it now. We are the master Jedi. So what plugs have I got in there? Oh, I don't oh, know. A torch. Lord. Torch. Is it? Oh, I don't know. I did, Lord, I did, it is not. a torch. He hates a torch <laughs> plug, folks. So we get that. I'll tell you what. I've not serviced it yet. We've got to get that thing out. Well, I'll let you do your famous thing, what you like to do, and I'll let you launch it. How about that? Well, I'm going to hit one of your new dogs. Hey? Hey? No, that'd be all right. Give him something to chase, wouldn't it? Let's get that on there. Oh, hello. Come on, come on, baby. Why did it take Tweedledee, Tweedledum, and Tweedledummer to fix my lawnmower? Shall it's got a torch plug in, love. Yeah, that's why. It's got to come out. We just found this out. Torch plug, Shaz. We was just doing a, 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 an air filter. Yeah. But we can't have that. He's, he's noticed it. He spotted it. it. Can't have it, Shaz. I can't undo that. It's too tight for me. Can, you, can you have what a... the size of your guns? Yeah. Can, you I can't do it, mate. Come on. Go on. Go on. You try to turn it the right way, oh, mate. Just loosen it off first, cup. <laughs> Righty tighty, lefty loosey, innit? <laughs> Get it out, come on, take what, it out. What are you doing now, Quentin? That's left hand, left handed, but normally. Oh, it's a bit tight, isn't it? What's I did say it was tight, don't I? I'll tell you what, that's not the right size plug span, isn't it? No, it was. Oh, come on, Gary, <laughs> pass, pass right. He, he's picked the wrong one. The dog's running away with blinking stuff in the workshop. Look, it's the wrong size. Right, it happens, folks. We normally cut that out. Go on, is that the right size? Oh, I is that the right size? I think it was spinning, yeah, it was spinning, yeah. We only just caught that, you know, that could have been a blinking catamatry. Oh. A catamatry? Is that a word? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> let's have a look and see what colour the plug is and see what state the engine was. Come on, let's have a look, let's investigate. Daddy. Oh, it's a rich shot, isn't it? A little bit rich, yeah. Yeah. But it is a torch, look. Only good. Go on. For smashing windows. Long chip. Duck! Go Don't say duck, he's a hunting dog, isn't he? <laughs> He's a hunting dog, Sharon. That'll be indoors in a minute. He'll retrieve that indoors. I, I, I'm quite tempted to start this up afterwards. Well, why don't we go for a little fire up? We'll take it out. I've not cleaned it yet. That's coming later on in the video, folks. It's only because he's here. I want to get my money's worth out of him. Well, not too tight, Martin. Just, no. just, just, yeah, just lip it up. Yes, yeah, compress the washer. Oh, no. Well, folks, it's a couple of days later now. We've got rid of that delivery bloke, and I've got him to do a bit of work, as you know. I've got him to put a new plug in, put a new air filter in. Why have a dog and bark yourself, eh? Right, so... All this mower really requires now is a bit of beautification. We're going to sharpen the blade, we're going to change the oil, that's the other two things we haven't done. Get rid of a bit of some of this rust on the handles and then uh, we'll take it a step further. But before we do all that, on with the old safety glasses. And I just want to get rid of all this old rubbish we got in there, just by, again, blowing down all around the mower. Not forgetting the wheel mechanisms, they get a lot of grass around them. Spin it around the other way. All under here you get grass collecting. Right. I also like to give the wheels a bit of a... Oh. 
All right, so we just got a little bit of oil residue left around here. This is from where they've been uh, filling it with oil or changing the oil or whatever, as you can see, because we've got the oil cap here. I like to just give that a little squirt, maybe of uh, some penetrating fluid or whatever, just to loosen off the grease and oil that's stuck in there. Just wipe away the residue. And you're left with, obviously, the little bits in the creases that you can't get at. And that's where compressed air is, your friend. So get your air gun. Blow it all out. Just finish off with a little dry up. And as you can see, got rid of all that oil residue. The compressed air does really good at getting in these little case, in these little corners there. So you can't get in there with a cloth, so that's the way to go about that. And there's a bit up there, as you can probably see there. Look, if I just get the air now, watch up there. See that bit up there, look. There you go. That's the beauty of the compressed air. So we're filling up now to our marks on our dipstick with SAE 30 engine oil. So here's our little dipstick mark. They normally take about half a litre in, in general, just to give you some sort of benchmark idea of these type of lawnmowers. So we have got corrugations here, and the oil looks pretty clean to be honest with you. Now do I really need to change that? <laughs> Let's just uh, have a better look. It is a bit dirty, I will change it, just for the sake of it. If it was clean as it looks on a dipstick, I would have probably left it, but uh, there you go. Right, let's get this around here. This is my oil extraction tool. And all we basically do is stick that hose in there, the lowest point of the engine, pump away, and out she comes. Let's take that out of there. All right, so we've got a little funnel there. I really want to get one of those longer neck funnels for this. And I've actually got 500 millilitres of oil here. Right, very important not to overfill these folks, because if you do that, it's going to smoke like a good one. So, Never overfill them. So we'll just have a little wipe off. Now I haven't put the full amount in now. I've put about 400 millilitres in there at the moment because I just want to let it level. And now do the old dipstick check again. And that looks a bit too full for me. So I'm just going to double check. So 400 millilitres is way too much. I can actually see it flapping about on the top there so i'm gonna to have to suck a bit of that out just suck a little bit out that's the beauty of these tools you see these um sucking tools there we go i'm gonna try that it looks like that the level should be just at the bottom of the threads if you look in there I mean, now i mean i could go and look online find out the engine and get the exact amount but quite often you'll find that there's a bit of residue left in there when you do an oil change and Putting the exact amount in what they specify is normally on a dry engine. And there's normally some residue left in there. Wind it in. Take it out again. Yep, that's right on the top level there now. It was coming sort of to the top of the dipstick up here, which is way too much. It's now just there now, right on the top of the dipstick. So I'm happy with that. And just as an indication, it's at the bottom of the threads. So even if you haven't got a measuring jug as I have. On this type of engine, this is the RS100 overhead valve, 100cc jobby. If you just give it a little shake, you can see that the oil is just at the bottom near enough of the threads. If obviously you can't see any oil there, it's obviously well too low, so you need to top it up. So depending on how much this mower's worth and how much your work you're actually invested into it, you don't want to really spend a lot of money doing something like this up. The paint seems to be in pretty good order, although this round this side, if I took an airline to this now, this would all blow out this paint there, which is bubbling there, and I don't want to do anything severe to that, apart from just give it a quick, quick wipe over. I'm not even bothered about the little bits down the bottom here. You expect that of a mower this age and this price bracket. But uh, the main body of the mower, as you can see, is very good. And this can do with just a little bit of a clean up, wipe down, possibly with some old fuel, for example. WD-40 works well. Also, any type of a penetrating fluid or whatever, just give it a good squirt. You ain't got to go too mad with it. And then give it a wipe down. So I like to get up under the creases if I can. Get in the tops there. Just give it a wipe down. And it just makes it look a bit tidier. Again, I'm going careful over this bit because uh, 
as you know the paint's blown we're not looking for a restoration or renovation job on this we just want to make it shine a little bit so as you probably saw early on in the video we did have mixed mowers come up and visit us and um, i included a bit of that last sort of a comedy video we done and mick's a lovely bloke and anyone who hasn't met mick there is a an event called sortex i think up in um birmingham on november the 5th i think at the nec center it's a lawn care lawn mower sort of uh, sort of um occasion and there's a very good chance that i'll possibly be going up there mick's going up there with a few other youtubers to have a meet up as well so uh, if you are free around then you have to phone up to all your tickets apparently so uh, it might be worth going around there and having a little laugh and a joke with us lot if we're there again all i'm doing is removing anything off the surface that basically shouldn't be there and it gives it a nice little sheen as well so that's what we're looking for I'm not investing a lot of time into this whatsoever because it's not a very expensive mower now if, again there's two ways i normally deal with the plastics depending on the type of lawnmower it is this is only a quick 70 pound mower if it was a sort of 150 to 250 300 pound lawnmower the plastics i would be coating with a, a product which i use called revive it that brings the plastics back to a nice glossy shine but wd-40 i'm using this dp-60 any sort of penetrant cleaner will bring plastics up looking okay so that's all i'm looking for as long as you dry the residue off it's uh something which makes the lawnmower look a whole lot better because what we're doing is, is what they do on the forecourt cleaning their cars when they sell their cars to us i've had this test running for quite a while and there's been no problems with it whatsoever so there you go and the only other thing i've got to do is change this fuel pipe the chap put a bigger fuel pipe on there and it was holding the governor arm and uh, causing a restriction i've got some proper sized fuel holes in there plus i don't know what fuel or how much fuel he's got left in the tank there's not a lot in there but i'll probably end up draining it out i don't know how long that's been in there so I'll quickly do that after i've done this flap at the back and this is literally a quick turnaround job paid for uh, as i said paid 25 pounds for this and it didn't really have any faults with it apart from a sticking governor arm which i've sorted out we didn't have a, uh, an air filter in it so i put a new air filter in so that's cost me four pound fifty we put a spark plug in it which is a couple of quid maybe and a little drop of oil which i always keep in stock let's say a couple of quid so i might have spent about 10 pounds on it all in total so that will take me up to 35 pounds quick wipe over i've doubled my money basically so 70 quid i expect this to sell for and i've just uh, been out here tinkering all those people who say oh yeah but you know you, your time is money no this is a hobby this is my hobby this is what i do a hobby i enjoy being out here tinkering rather than sitting indoors watching telly and while i'm tinkering i'm getting a bit of money for it so it may not be an hourly rate but who cares i'm enjoying what i'm doing and that's what all us people in the small engine community or the restoring community like doing we like tinkering and if you can make a bit of money doing it happy days right do you know what i'm not even going to bother painting the handles i do believe that that's possibly the wrong cable on there might be a bit long so i'm just gonna put a couple of cable ties on there as i said i don't want to spend extra money on this so i'm just gonna just sort of tease it down to there like that i have one more up there this is a quick in and out job you see like that so the cable will be running down the side of the grass bag there so that should be okay there now where's they, where are they gone where's my new oh there they are my new grips my new cutters i got a set of these these i was on about them in a previous video these old nipex ones uh see mick and uh luke uh, uh ordered them and bought them and uh, they are very very good i needed to get a new set of pliers and they really do cut well so that's my new nipex very good right well we're very nearly there now just that fuel line to change and uh oh i may have to take the air filter body off that means i've got to take the blinking filter out that mixed mowers put in for me so i might have to just remove that and have to bring this forward so i've got to take these two 10 mil screws out there let's just undo these two 10 mils just to remove that cover because i can't gain access to the carburetor end of the hose without removing that now we've got a breather pipe there as you can see there 
and also a little primer bulb pipe there. So I'm just going to leave that out of the way. Um, everything else looks fine under there. And straight away, I'm glad I took this off because um, I'm going to take that breather, uh, the primer bulb pipe off because I think I've just seen the reason why it probably got stuck. And that is because the spring is not in its attachment. This is the governor arm spring what makes it return. And if you can see there, it's just floating about. Look, it should go through that little hole there. Like that, and I'm just going to bend it round a bit because it looks like the spring's stretched and opened up a bit. There we go. There we go, so that you've got pressure now on that governor arm, making it return. And that's what we're looking for. So that's probably why it was in the stuck open position. So there you go, just a little remedy there. And uh, lucky I did look underneath there. I wasn't going to, but um, it does pay. So I'm just going to take this bit of hose off now, undo these two clips, put a new bit of hose on, and get everything back to normal. So let's just undo this clip here. That's what I mean, the chap would have been in here to put this new hose on, so he would have had this cover off, you see. Let's just pull that and I want to empty this old fuel out as well. Because I don't know what sort of state it's in. It don't look too bad, to be honest with you. I would imagine he would have put new fuel in it. And I won't waste this fuel, I'll keep this for cleaning uh, engine parts down and carbs and stuff, so it will make, I will make use of it. I've just got to undo that rear pipe now. I'll just stick that under there. Just to take any old fuel so it don't run all through the deck. Right, so coming over to my fuel line selection. That's the one. Measure that with the size of the uh, bore. Yeah, that's about right. The other one was way too big. As you can see there, look, that's the difference in size of the... Uh, and chewing the, the chap thought that um, the extra, <laughs> this is how people think, you see. Look, what's that in there? A little bit of grass, isn't it? He thought the extra bore size was meaning it was getting too much fuel, which obviously isn't the case anyway. Just push that on all the way. Here we go. There we go. She's on. Get our clip. Squeeze it together and just put it over there so that can't come off like that. There we go. Governor arm's working as it should do. Push that back on there, get our air box, connect up our primer bulb circuit, and that's our breather pipe there. If you do overfill your lawnmower, you'll find it will chug oil out there, into there, into here, and then into your air filter, and then your engine starts to smoke. So one of the symptoms is you get oil in your air filter, so don't overfill them. On with your two nuts, and literally just nip them up. Don't go too mad with them. I normally like to do them by hand, but um, that'll be fine. Just check whether it's priming. You can see the petrol going in, although we've got an empty tank at the moment. There's the fuel, look, you can see the fuel there, look. So we can put on our air filter, just as mixed mowers did. There we go, on with the lid. There we go. One final wipe over to get rid of my grubby fingerprints. And that mower is looking a whole lot better. Right, just pull the spark plug cover off. Just uh, unzoom this. There we go. Right, all I'm gonna do now it's not too bad. Yeah, it's got a bit of dulling. It's just a bit rusty on the surface, but um, as you can see, the uh, edges literally ain't too bad at all. But I will just give them a quick sharpen. And all I tend to do is to get a 80 grit flappy disc or 60 grit one of the two, and just follow the contours of the original uh, cut. And hopefully you'll end up with a cut or sharpen exactly the same profile as the original cut was there. Now, if you notice at the end there, there are some um, little divots taken out. So to get them out, what I tend to do is to flatten 
the top of the blade off again until the divots are gone and then resharpen. So that's what I'm going to do now. So as you can see now, the actual blade has got a flat top to it now. So then I'll resharpen again until that's got a nice edge on it. I'm pretty happy with that. And I'll do the same to the other side. And depending on how bad the, the um, blade is, I normally give them a bit of a, a quick spray job as well. So I'm going to finish off with this one and I'll see you in a minute. And the only other thing I'll do, once I've done both sides, I'll take it out of the vise. Some people have got balancing tools for balancing the blade. I'll just tend to stick a screwdriver in. And as you can see, that isn't too bad at all. So I'll do the same to the other side, check the balance again, and then everything should be okay. Then I'll probably give it a coat of paint. Right, there you go folks, I did give it a coat of black paint and I always put a bit of um, tape over the edge so that when you pull that off, as you can see there, look, it looks like it's definitely been maintained rather than just uh, throwing it on all full of rust sort of thing. So there you go. So I'm going to put this back on now. I also painted the centre bolt as well. And one to remember, one to remember, the flutes always go facing upwards. So that's just one thing to remember there, folks. Get our impact gun. There we go, that's on nice and tight. That was just a simple can of uh, black satin paint there, any car paint will do. And as you can probably see now, that looks a whole lot better. So happy days. Right, got it outside now, folks. Just gonna put some uh, fresh fuel into it. I don't like to go too much because uh, obviously fuel is money. But uh, we'll put some in it. There we go. That's enough to give to the new owner. Don't want to go too mad. Just check for leaks. I'm looking around the carb, nothing there. Right, let's give it a prime. Don't forget the carb was empty. Let's give it a pull. Get back, by Bison. Not Bison, what's your name? Merlin. <laughs> So in reality, that probably took me about an hour to do, not counting the waiting time for the paint to dry. You've probably taken this video to up to about half an hour, I suppose, something like that. And I added some uh, previous footage in there, so uh, an hour's tinkering about. It's probably gonna sell for 70 pounds, this one. I've spent a tenner on it uh, for the uh, remedial work I've done on it, and a little bit of time just cleaning it up. There you go, folks, just a little real life video on if you do want to repair these things for profit and make some money out of them while you're having a good time doing it in the shed as well tinkering don't forget if you do like my channel have a check out my other playlist also hit the subscribe button down there and ring that little notification bell and set your preferences to all and uh each time we upload a video you'll get notified that one's been uploaded you'll get a ping or something like that come through an email or something to come up on your phone thanks very much folks hope you've enjoyed this video i'll see you in the next video and until then bye for now